all the great labels that have come and gone over the decades, there's one that stands high above the rest, both due to its longevity, as well as the fact that even today, after more than 70 years, it remains the pinnacle of its given genre, Blue Note Records. After the better part of a century, the label remains synonymous with all that's great in jazz music, as nearly every jazz luminary has spent some of their career as part of the family at Blue Note Records. Founded in 1939 by Alfred Lyon and Max Margulies, the first handful of releases on Blue Note were actually in the more popular boogie style of the era, and due to the financial constraints, a majority of these musicians were paid in drinks, as they were asked to come into rented studios very late in the evening after most of them had already played their evening sets. But this changed very quickly, and by 1940, Blue Note had given themselves a reputation as one of the friendliest labels when it came to how they treated artists, making many internal adjustments to make the artists feel more comfortable and more in control of the music they were recording. Blue Note would later become famous as the first label to pay session musicians for rehearsal times, as at the time it was felt this was a wasteful practice. However, due to the superior quality of the final product, they proved very quickly that this was a very good idea. The label did go on a brief hiatus in 1941 when Lyon was drafted into the Second World War, but less than two years later the label was up and running again as Lyon was willing to let the non-traditional type artists that other labels pass on record for Blue Note, and it was this understanding of what was coming up next in jazz as well as his outright courage to work on the bleeding edge of the genre that very quickly made Blue Note the first home of the bop style of jazz. The first big shift for the label came in about 1947 when both Thelonious Monk and Art Blakey laid down fantastic sessions for the label. However, the reality is upon their initial release, these records did not sell well at all, though in a modern sense they are seen as absolute landmark recordings. It was the open and more relaxed environment at Blue Note Records that drew just about every single significant jazz artist to spend time at the label, and artists like Fats Navarro, Bud Powell, and even Miles Davis recorded breakthrough moments for music as part of the Blue Note family. Many point to the engineering and production work of both Lion and the great Rudy Van Gelder as one of the keys behind the Blue Note sound, as there's no question that the techniques and approaches they used behind the boards were anything short of revolutionary. Yet while Blue Note Records had a number of years that yielded sensational releases, you can look at 1957 and 1958 as the most important in the label's history. This is where you find John Coltrane recording his Blue Train album, as well as Cannonball Adderley's Something Else, that features among other people, Miles Davis, Art Blakey, and Hank and Sam Jones, along with Cannonball Adderley. The 1960s brought everyone from Herbie Hancock to Dexter Gordon to Freddie Hubbard to the Blue Note label, and even as pop and rock music began to take over the charts, Blue Note continued to push into the avant sound, allowing people like Eric Dolphy and Andrew Hill to produce watershed moments in jazz history. Throughout the late 1960s and 1970s, the Blue Note imprint was bought by a number of larger label distributors, and it eventually went dormant for a number of years in the 1980s, emerging in about 1983 again. However, over the past three decades, the label has found a resurgence, once again bringing the best of what's happening in jazz to the world, becoming the home of artists like John Schofield and Wynton Marcellus, as well as releasing amazing pieces from deep inside their unparalleled vaults. Even in the past decade, Decade, Blue Note Records found what may be its biggest commercial success of all time when a young performer on the label named Nora Jones swept the 2002 Grammys with her Come Away With Me album. While hundreds, if not thousands of record labels have come and gone over the past century, Blue Note Records remains the pinnacle of jazz, and it also serves as a reminder of the quality that can be produced when a label becomes the best there is at finding what's best in a specific genre, as well as allowing an artist to simply work at their craft with no constraints. Oh!